Happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today we're talking about medical cannabis. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. After cannabis was legalized in Canada, the new cannabis regulations changed some of the landscape related to medical cannabis. One of those regulations related to the amount of cannabis a person might be able to possess or grow to deal with their medical needs for cannabis. The problem was that for a lot of medical cannabis users, the amount of medical cannabis that they were taking far exceeded what the regulations permitted for your own personal possession. And so there raised a concern for these individuals that they might not have as much access to their medicine as they otherwise would have under the earlier version of the legislation, or alternatively as they should, to deal with their medical issues. One such individual was Alan Harris, and he filed a constitutional challenge to the regulations, arguing that they violated his rights to, under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms under Section 15 to not be discriminated against on the basis of his medical needs. Unfortunately, his claim was unsuccessful. The Supreme Court of Canada really missed an opportunity in this case to hear a case that had to deal with the medical needs of individuals and to further expand the scope of our access to cannabis in Canada. Canada has now become essentially a world leader in cannabis legalization. It has opportunities for world leadership in research related to cannabis, including the use of medical cannabis. But excluding the very significant portion of the population who use very high dose amounts of medicinal cannabis is essentially limiting those research opportunities and limiting the ability of individuals who need that medicine to have access to it. Legalization was never supposed to limit the access of cannabis uh, individuals, cannabis taking individuals to have their medicine and to take the necessary amounts to treat their conditions. And so why would the regulations be interpreted in a way that limited that access, particularly when it came to regulations or when it comes to regulations about access to narcotics, the regulations are interpreted in a way that's more favorable to the medical user even though, in those circumstances, the medical user would be more likely to be exposed to things like addiction and adverse impacts from the narcotic because of its inherent dangers. This is something that the Supreme Court of Canada should have sorted out, because this affects the lives and the quality of life of millions, potentially, of people, and will continue to affect the quality of life of those individuals. And unless we can have the opportunity to properly study and properly assess the quality of life and quality of care that people are getting when they receive high dose medicinal cannabis, then we'll never have the opportunity to have a scientific foundation to change the regulations, and charter challenges like this will continue to fail. It's unfortunate the Supreme Court of Canada didn't recognize that legalization should not have functioned in the way that it did, and corrected this by allowing the application for leave and considering the issue fully. Hopefully another case is heard where the Supreme Court of Canada has the opportunity to consider the impact that the regulations have on high-dose cannabis users. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.